Um, so homework from yesterday was to set our soul's intention. And the reason we're doing that is because that's going to be one of the things that's going to help us declutter. So that's like one of the questions that, you know, as I pull stuff out of my closet, I'm going to ask myself first, does it serve my soul's intention? So did you guys have anything that came to you that you wanted to share about what your soul's intention was? Or not is fine. My intention is to one day have everything organized so I don't need to have be in like panic mode and look for the piece where it's somewhere hidden in the safe place, which I will always remember where, where it is it, and it's not there. Right. So yes, I would like to have this like perfect organization, like you know, Pinterest pantry, everything like you know, nicely put organized. So yes, that's my sole intentions. Awesome. Mine is to um, mine is to bring beauty into the world. So that's my intention. And Magda, I would challenge you to tweak it a little bit because it sounds a little bit like maybe a little bit negative, like you're not organized. But make it make it something like on the flip side, make it something beautiful you know does that make sense like one of the things that um we talked about yesterday was how uh your ego talks about how it, it wants to fix things and your soul talks about how things are always fixed already and always beautiful already so like um i want to lose 10 pounds versus i want to be vital and healthy so i don't know if that sounded negative to anybody else, but sounded a little negative to me. So anyway, maybe it's just me. So um, honestly, without having even watched the, you know, the, the recap from yesterday, I already have a soul's intention. Awesome. Um, because we've had um, an extremely difficult end to 2023 and an even more difficult beginning i'm sorry end to 2022 and an even more difficult beginning to 2023 so we lost my sister-in-law that i knew from eight years old so 52 years I'm sorry. Um, yep right before christmas december 22nd and we did her memorial two days before her and my brother's 42nd wedding anniversary so that was very difficult. And I spent uh, 12 days up in Michigan helping my brother go through the hoarding my sister-in-law was doing. I remember that house when it was absolutely pristine. She was up and about cleaning every single day and literally the place was spotless and it was gorgeous and it was very welcoming and it was peaceful when you walked in and you, you could feel you could feel her energy and it was always positive. And then they had an accident six years ago. She had fractured uh, C6 and 7 vertebrae right in the middle where we clip our bras. Ooh. And that impacted her arms and hands and her legs and feet. Oh, man. Yeah. So that, uh, that took her you know, out of commission where she could walk, but barely. She couldn't grip a lot of things. So she had to have occupational therapy to even feed herself. Um, so, you know, I looked at that and went, oh my goodness, I don't ever, ever want to put a burden like this on my kids. Yeah. Um, wow. This is kind of yeah. timely then. Yeah, very. And yeah. then, and then my uh, oldest brother's youngest son, my nephew, Mark, was killed in a tragic car accident two days after his 36th birthday on January 15th. So, sorry. so we, we lost within four weeks, two very close family members. And you know what? I'm on a mission. Awesome. Good. <laughs> Yay. I'm on a mission because uh, I, I did bring some things home with me that were my brother does you know he was John with my sister-in-law um you know he was like here you know take what you want um go through stuff you know 
I didn't need him going through all of her clothes because it would be very, very difficult for him. So we split up activities and stuff. Um, but I'll tell you what, he was on a mission to get the house in a workable state for him, which to me was a huge step from her passing. And it was also a way that helped him grieve through that process. So one thing I am going to say is, was, as we go through the declutter, it's okay to reminisce. It's okay to be sentimental. However, we also need to be intentional. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, decide, is, is this really something I need? And does it bring my soul joy yeah. or not? So that's, that's what I'll be doing. That's a great point. Um, and I'm going to read something specifically from the book about, um, is it, is it past or is it future? Is it present? And that kind of really, that's one of my um, most difficult things. So I, I chose that to, to read, but um, so important. So thank you for talking about that. Okay, so um, let's just go right into that. What, in the book, Release, which is the book that I'm kind of taking all of this out of, is um, she says that there are, I think it's five questions that you ask yourself. One is, does it contribute to my soul intention? So we did that yesterday. Hopefully we have that. Um, if we don't, something's gonna come to you. Um, the second question is, is it beautiful? That's pretty simple, right? Is it beautiful? And that's just up to you, whether it's beautiful or not. Is it useful? Is it something that I'm going to use that is useful to me? Does it love me back? So I think this is what um, we hear uh, as what I hear as uh, does it spark joy? So does it when I hold it, do I have some energy around it? Do I does it love me back? That's what I what I feel with that. Does it have a sacred place to live? So um, if it's something in the bottom of my closet, it does not have a sacred place to live. So not saying that that moving forward, I can't take that and, and give it a sacred place to live, but um, there's another piece in the book that if you guys are interested, I'll read or I'll post it about like, does it have a sacred place to live? And if something in our house doesn't have a sacred place to live, then how important is it to us anyway? And maybe we should get rid of it. So I thought that was kind of telling. Does it help me serve my love to the world? So that's another question that she asks. And then the final one is, is it in present time? And this to me was very like, I, I had to, um, I'm going to read it uh, from the book. But this was like, be here now, you know, is it present time? And that's, I struggle with this a lot. So from the book, it says, most of us don't live in present time. We either locate in past time, which is the land of memories, outdated beliefs, or charged emotions from other times and places, or in future time, which is the land of fear and planning. If you hang out in past time, you'll notice yourself thinking, and talking a lot about the days of yore. You might glorify old relationships or lament how you used to be a size six or repeatedly tell stories of the trials and tribulations of your life. I know we all have these people in our lives, right? <laughs> right, I, I try not to, 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 to do that, but oh man, like I was just talking to my family and whoo, that's kind of where they live right now. Um, you'll have skinny clothes in your closet. I might do that. A file cabinet that barely opens and regret that you didn't say yes to that job offer five years ago. You'll feel guilty or sad or angry more often than you care to admit. So I'm really trying to, to not do that anymore, but that's really hard. All right. If you hang out in future time, you'll find yourself focusing on what might happen. You plan ahead to the point of missing the moment or be hyper vigilant about everything you can manage, about everything so you can manage any impending disasters. You'll helicopter everyone in your life and pride yourself on anticipating their needs. 
You'll have fat clothes in your closet, an overabundance of worry, and lots of brown grocery bags stuffed in the space between your refrigerator and kitchen. You'll, you'll be prepared for any eventuality and hear yourself saying things like, I have to keep this just in case, or I might need that someday, or what if. Okay, that's totally me too. Like I have all kinds of stuff that I'm saving. What if? I don't want to run out. I don't want to. So, I mean, man, we're not supposed to do either one of these things. Okay, <laughs> let's get to what we are supposed to do. Um, remember, the ego does its best to keep us in past and future time, but our soul is at home in present time, dancing with life as it is, moment by moment. When we live in present time, our physical environments reflect who we are now and what our life is now. We're willing to experience moments as they come without rushing ahead or holding on. We trust that everything we truly need comes to us in the perfect time and the best way and that we have and have always had. The flexibility and capacity to respond to whatever happens in our life is something is not present time. Let it go. So that's like, I read that and I was like, oh man, um, really spoke to me. And that's going to be my biggest challenge as I go through my own closet. All right, a couple other ground rules. Um, one thing that really spoke to me from the book is that she says that there's no need to force ourselves to get rid of something. And this means the process for me is going to take a while, uh, which is fine. But um, when it's ready to release, it will release. And I'm hoping that as we go down this path, things will start to say, okay, I'm ready to go. And I'm just going to trust in that. And I don't think this is going to be quick, but I do think it's going to be something that hopefully when I as I go through, I can, I can learn and then have better habits and, and keep them sticking. But um, I think it might take some time, but um, I am offering to all of us that we should just trust ourselves. Also trust yourself in knowing where to start. So we just need to start somewhere. And um, for me, the, the easiest place to start was with my linen closet because I'm not quite as attached to, you know, towels and sheets and stuff as opposed to how attached I am to my clothes. So that was easier for me. So I'm going to ask you guys to come up with the, you just pick a place to start. It doesn't have to be closet like it is going to be for me, but um, pick something, pick a place to start and trust yourself and try and find something that might sound easy. Oh, this was another good one out of the book. Um, rely on the magic of 10%. So if we think about the fact that we're just doing a little bit, just 10%, like for me, it will be, I'm taking 10 blouses out of my closet and I have to get rid of one. You know, if you just rely on the magic of 10%, just make slow and steady progress. That's something that um, I think is really going to help us. The other thing that I'm going to have to embrace, I'm going to have to get my husband to embrace, is to know that it is going to get messier before it gets better. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you've watched Marie Kondo, but I did watch some of her some of her stuff, and I had resisted it forever, and then I started watching just a few weeks ago, and she literally has people take everything out of their closet and pile it up. And that can be a scary sight, but I think seeing that like triggers our brain to say, what the heck am I doing? Like, why do I have all this stuff? And I think that's really um, valuable, but also it's, it's gonna be a mess and it's gonna get messier before it gets better. And we just have to say, that's, that's okay. Um, One of the things that um, we're gonna do for our homework is we are going to take a tour of our house. So go in the front door and walk through your house and open everything up 
and open all the drawers up, all the doors, go through all the closets, look in your house where you're going to, where you have clutter. So it's about just really opening your eyes to, you know, cause I, I thought, oh, my closet's perfect, you know, but it is not perfect. So it's going to, it might be somewhere where you don't expect it to be. And just, just like bringing everything out and putting it on the, um, making a pile and, and seeing it all, like we have to force ourselves to, I mean, not force ourselves, but if we really want to get better at this, and if we really want to release the stuff, and if we really want to get rid of stuff that isn't serving us anymore, which I think we all do, and we really want to release that stagnant energy that's stuck in our kitchen cabinets, we just have to really be honest with ourselves and go through our homes and say, okay, what what am I really doing? You know, I'm presenting this wonderful image to the world, but what am I really doing? And as you walk through your house and you take a tour of your house and you go through every room and you open all the drawers and you open all the doors, you don't have to keep them all open, <laughs> but open it up just to check it out. You know, just make a mental note that, okay, yeah, yeah, this is, this is something I need to do. And and make a mental note of where it might be easiest for you to start. So that's gonna be your homework for tonight, to take a tour of your house and say, where am I gonna start? And just, just claim it. And also as you're taking that tour, notice if you have fragmented things all over, like, um, I don't have, nothing's coming to me right now as an example, but you're going to feel more organized and better in your home if like things are stored with like things. So if we have like a drawer in the kitchen that has all kinds of stuff in it, which I have, um, tools and tape and, you know, pens and all that stuff, it's like a catch all drawer and if I have a place where I store all my pens, I'm going to feel better. I'm going to always know that I can go to that one place to get a pen as opposed to, oh, maybe I've left it here. Maybe I've left it there. So start to, as you're doing your house tour, do that inventory of where, where am I fragmented? So I might have stuff in this closet and I might have stuff in that closet. And I might have stuff in the other closet. And if we can pull all that like stuff together, it's going to make us feel better in our homes. Um, she says specifically in the book, sorting reduces chaos and fragmentation. There's a place for everything and everything is in its place where you can find it easily and think to yourself, where will it live? So where should my pens live? Where will it live? All right, you guys have any questions yet? I do, though it may be a little ahead of its time. Yes, ma'am. Because this is one of, I think, this is part of my sort of roadblock about this question. So I have all, I'm a writer and a professor of English. So I have a lot of books. Yeah. And I'm good about my books, right? Like I have called my books. I am I am good with my books. I also have all of my mother's books and quite a few of my father's books. Yeah. And my problem with those books is I don't want to put them in a landfill. Yeah. And nobody will take them. Really? Nobody wants. And like there, some of them are very nice hardback, you know, like, but I I I'm frozen in that I don't want them to go into the garbage yeah I heard that what I could do is literally field strip them and put all of the pages of all of the books into the recycling bin but that will take me the rest of my life <laughs> so I I sort of every time I look at this I mean there is more than that because I have a lot of all of their stuff but yeah Whatever I think about like where to begin, the place I want to begin is getting rid of these freaking books. And the problem is I can't, it, does the book or do you, or does anybody have an idea? I, I appreciate that Magda, but I, my concern is that then my life will just be taken up with me shipping books off to people, you know, 
Um, I've talked to the used bookstores that are around me and they, they're like, oh, we'll give you credits for more, you know, and I, I don't even care about that, but it's hundreds of books that I'm dealing with in this. So, I mean, hundreds of books and of all topics, um, everything, yeah, everything under the sun, business, religion, fiction. I could have an Amazon seller sell them. Mm. I don't know, honestly, I just give them away if I, I just want them out of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been my hurdle is I don't know where to dispose of them responsibly. Like clothes, I can handle furniture. Yeah. I can handle yeah. books. Yeah. Goodwill won't take my goodwill will not take books. What? Because people have just been like, oh, my parents died here. I'm going to offload, you know, a thousand books from 1957 or whatever. So, yeah, they're just not taking I hear that there's, I'm in Delaware, and I hear that there's a store somewhere outside of Baltimore that sells, Carrie, you might know about this, like books by the yard for like chain restaurants and whatnot. Right. Um, to make it pretty. Yeah. To make it look like people read, which is <laughs> fine. I don't care what they do with these books. I just don't know. I don't know how to dispose of them responsibly. <sighs> what about coffee shops? just leave them just like walk into a coffee shop and leave a book a day no talk to the man <laughs> I, mean, that would be a idea I did for... this in with in in Europe one time where I just would finish reading a book and leave it in the hotel and think somebody's gonna read it yeah right. yeah and I mean there's some uh some folks who have Airbnbs mm -hmm. that oh. uh, they may want some of those books so you could post you know free to Airbnbs you know yeah options that's a... for books um you've also got uh like some of the more um i'm going to call them the cottagey you know bed and breakfasts mm -hmm. they also would you know ask you could reach out to any of the bed and breakfasts in your area and say hey i have some really good you know older books that people might enjoy reading would you be up for some um and i am giving them away i'm donating them yeah. if you yeah. donate them in honor of your mom and dad there you go yeah well that's so, that's it's looking at Thank you. Yep, you're very welcome. And then also there are Amazon sellers out there. There may be people who do want to buy them and they'll, they'll sell them for you. They'll take your pictures, you know, load them, take care of all of it, including the shipping. And then yeah. they just send you the check when, when money comes in. I don't care. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> they can keep like, I just don't want to. <laughs> Like, I don't want to be like every day showing up at the post office with a crate of books that I'm shipping off to somebody. So there yeah. is also like community clubhouses, they usually or parks where you have like, at least in Florida, like a little bit of outdoor libraries. So the little free libraries. Books, yes. Read the books and take the book. And, and seriously, do the garage sales. People buy a lot of books on garage sales. Yes. Yeah, I've been thinking about a garage sale. That would work. But I love the idea of the neighborhood books. I would need a building. I would not need a little thing on a post. I would need an actual building. <laughs> it's bad. Okay. All right. Well, thank I don't you. have an answer to that. So I'm. thank you guys for, for offering up some information. Um, okay. So I wanted to also address, separate the thing from the feeling. That's something that's in the book. So I'm gonna read out of the book. And Lisa, I wonder if some of those books, like there might also be like a feeling there, like it's attached to your parents and, you know. Some of them, my just, mother's college yearbook. Right, right, just a thought. Okay, so I'm gonna read us this, passage about separating the thing from the feeling. Cluttered souls tend to confuse objects with feelings. As an example, maybe you have a stuffed lion your mom gave you and you feel happy and loved in its presence. That's fine. But if you don't truly get that love, if you don't truly get that the love that connects you with your mom is inside you, you'll likely have lots of things that remind you of your mom's love. Many of them you won't even like, but you're, you'll hear your, yourself say, but I can't get rid of that. My mom gave it to me. 
When we think an object holds a feeling and we're afraid to lose the feeling, we accumulate. Oh boy, this really spoke to me. So um, a couple more paragraphs and then. Objects and feelings get confused in several ways. Sometimes we keep an object to try to hold onto an important experience. This one sounds like, I actually hate that itchy blanket, but I can't let go of it. I got it on my trip to Peru. Sometimes we keep an object in mind, we keep an object to remind ourselves of a success in our, in our life. This one sounds like, oh, I'm definitely keeping all those law, law books. They prove I made it through law school. Sometimes we keep an object because it holds a wish. This one sounds like, I don't like that painting, but my brother gave it to me before we stopped talking and I wish we were still close. Sometimes we keep an object to remember a relationship. This one sounds like my husband died two years ago, but I'm keeping all of his clothes so it feels like he's still with me. Sometimes we keep an object because it holds the feeling of a dream we once had. This one sounds like I have all those paintbrushes because I always wanted to be an artist. Did any of that resonate with you guys? Right? When we forget the feelings live inside our heart, not in objects, we end up with clutter. To remedy this, trust your deeper soul knowing that you can never lose anything. Then narrow down your possessions on those that truly represent the important people and experiences in your life and honor them with a sacred place to live. If you're holding on to objects related to a dream, see if that dream is still alive in present time. If it is, wake up and take some inspired action towards it. So I think we're all doing this. We're all, I, I know I am. So um, I need to not do that anymore and uh, stop keeping things because they are related to a feeling that I already have that feeling inside. Did that resonate with you guys? Yeah. That's pretty much all I have left to unclutter. I, my closet's good. Yeah. I don't close and I throw stuff away if they're mine, but it's like, I have my father-in-law's uh, stamp collection. It's a big one. I don't know what to do with that. I have plates from my husband's grandma. We don't like them, but we can't get rid of them. Yeah. So it'll be tough. Yeah. Um, one thing that I am going to tell you guys is that I have invited, I have a, a girlfriend who does um, reselling and garage sales and, and had a big clutter problem. And she found different places that were looking for different things. And they might not cover all of the things that we're looking to get rid of, but she's going to join us on Thursday and talk about how she. Um, you know, specifically connected to different organizations and found stuff for her stuff and that how that actually made it easier because if you know that you are um, supporting uh, I don't know, women that are that are that are homeless and trying to find jobs and you're giving your clothes to them like having that connection to that, knowing that your clothes are having a life beyond you. I think that is actually something that's really going to help me. So Thursday, she's going to join us. And maybe she'll have an answer for books. And maybe she'll have an answer for stamp collections. All right, guys, that is um, all I have for today. Um, tomorrow we're going to go into more like the practical, okay, now how exactly do I do this? And um, and step by step, we're going to get this done. But tonight I need you to take a tour through your house and make a decision where we're going to start. Excellent. Excellent. I've got to get the book. The book is so good. Yeah. It sounds really good. It is really good. Surprisingly, not a book my mother owned. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly the one book my mother did not own. 
personally the one. Yeah, Lisa, I have to tell you, we had a very similar experience with, um, of course, emptying out my mom and dad's house uh, when we put my mom in uh, um, Alzheimer care and right. my father passed away because he was her caretaker. Um, oh my gosh, the books. I'm mm -hmm. talking the big boxes just full and stacked to the rim of books. Heaven, heaven help us. It was an ordeal, a really huge ordeal. My mom was a pack rat. Yeah, so also. was mine. So yeah. was mine. And I she know that six years ago when I moved into this house, I brought 48 like paper cartons of books that are mine that yeah. I had rigidly gone through and sort of thinned to like, those are the ones I can't get rid of, which my nephews are going to have to cope with when I'm dead. But I, I, there's probably, you know, another 50 of hers and another 20 of my father's and I just oh. can't have them all. Nope. I can't face them. So we're going to face them, Lisa. We're going to face them. We're going to face them. And find a home for them or something. Yeah. Rehome them. Rehome them. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Thank, Thank you. you. Carrie. I will see and you nice guys to meet everyone else. Thank you, gorgeous. Thank you, ladies. Bye. I'll see you guys bye tomorrow bye. at noon.